Jack. Oh my god, so big. Okay, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. I'm trying to do something here. You're not helping. Jack! Dogs. Well, Valdman Way, Ash. Ashley. Ashley is my name. My name is Ash. Oh my god, this sucks. I'm like rambling on. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Veldman Way. If you're new here, my name is Ashley, and a month ago I was laid off from my job at PayPal. And one month ago I posted a video about it on YouTube, thinking that maybe a hundred people might view it. And I'm completely blown away by the amount of views. It's almost at 50,000 views. And the amount of people that reached out to me on LinkedIn and connected with me, the amount of people that commented and told me that they were in the same boat as me, or they have been in the past, wishing me good luck, asking me to continue to post about my journey of finding a new job. And I'm also very surprised by the amount of comments from people that had not so nice things to say, like telling me that nobody cares and that I should grow up and find a real job, which I'm pretty sure my job at PayPal was real. Yeah, it was, it was very real. And also the amount of people that told me I should get into welding, which I found interesting, but trust me, I should not get into welding. I am very accident prone. So any kind of job that has power tools or things that catch on fire probably isn't the right fit for me. So yeah, I appreciate the suggestion, but I'm going to say that that's a no go for me. But I wanted to just give you an update. What's been going on? How many jobs have I applied to? How many interviews have I been on? Where am I at right now with my job search and what's next for me? So that's exactly what I'm going to give you today. So a little bit of background on me. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I've included a link to my playlist here. I have created a couple of videos prior to this one just about me being laid off. I took you guys along with me on an interview, my first interview after being laid off. Um, I also included some videos about, you know, how to ace a star interview and um, how to reach out to recruiters and or hiring managers on LinkedIn, that type of thing. So all of that's included in that playlist. Hopefully you guys will go back and take a look at that. And, you know, maybe if you're in the same boat as me, some of my tips and tricks might help you land your next position. So I was laid off from my job at PayPal. I work in talent acquisition. And if you have seen the news, all of these large tech companies are in the process right now of laying off thousands and thousands of people. And unfortunately, talent acquisition seems to be one of the departments for these companies that's impacted the most. And the reason for that is, is because in 2001, most, mostly 2001, early 2000, 2001, did I really just say 2001? 2021. Yeah. In early, Mostly in 2021, um, many of these companies were doing mass hiring of talent acquisition professionals because they anticipated a large hiring boom. They were hiring like crazy and paying people in talent acquisition crazy salaries. I mean, they got me. I made a move over to PayPal in 2021 and it was fantastic. I worked fully remote. I had a great salary, great benefits, unlimited vacation time. I mean, I was living the life. It was awesome. But unfortunately, the... Uh, my dog's out there barking. But unfortunately, the economy took a big old and all of this anticipated hiring that these companies were gonna do never really happened. So because of that, their talent acquisition teams have been impacted greatly by the layoffs and other departments, of course, as well, but obviously there's been a huge amount of talent acquisition professionals right now that are on the job market. For instance, like Airbnb just this week, or maybe it was last week, laid off 30% of their talent acquisition team. So, I mean, that's just a crazy amount. So. You know, to say that competition out there for positions is fierce is an understatement. I mean, the amount of people applying to the same roles that I'm applying to, I mean, there's thousands of people. So it's been very daunting, very scary time. I'm not used to that. Like when I've made job changes in the past, I'll apply to a position and like within a week or two, I get 
you know, an offer. So it's been crazy. So I applied to a total of about 38 positions. I think probably more to 40 to 45. I have a running spreadsheet because I wanted to be able to keep track of the roles that I applied to and where I'm at in the process just to make sure that I'm not applying to a position twice or, you know, just to kind of keep track for myself too. And, and I also, in case I needed it for unemployment to be able to say, okay, these are the jobs I applied to because for unemployment in the state of Illinois, you do have to prove that you are actively like applying or doing some sort of, or interviewing or whatever the case may be to continue to collect unemployment. So I wanted to get all of that stuff together. So that way I had it in case I needed it. So I applied to about 40 positions, I'd say, and I got, no responses. Well, I won't say I didn't get any responses. So this is how it's kind of gone. I've had a total of three and a half interviews. And then I'll tell you in a second why I had half an interview. Two of those positions, and in one of my past videos you saw, I interviewed for a position. It was an agency recruiting role, which real quick, the difference between agency and corporate. Corporate, you work for a company, you do recruiting for that company, you're an employee of that company, and you just hire for that company. Agency recruiting, you work for a recruiting agency, and they go out and you know they have companies that either come to them to help them fill short-term positions or permanent roles within the company, but you're, you're not an employee of that company. So usually with agency recruiting, you have a very low salary and then it's based mostly on your commissions or you have like a draw, which is different where you don't even have a base, you have a draw and then it's drawn off your commissions. So that's usually a very different pay structure from what I'm used to. I am a corporate recruiter. I've been in corporate recruiting for the last 11 and a half years. So that's usually the kind of the roles that I'm more interested in. So I interviewed with two agencies and then I had an interview with another, um, with an energy company. Um, and then I had an interview, a half interview <laughs> with another company uh, for a sales recruiter position. And I say half interview because I saw the position, I reached out to the recruiter on LinkedIn, which if you haven't seen my video about how to, re how to reach out to recruiters and our hiring managers on LinkedIn, I'm gonna include a link up here because that has, I mean, right now with the way the job market is, that's a must. I mean, doing that is a must. So definitely make sure you watch that video. But, but I reached out to her and she responded and wanted to meet with me. I did like a video, not a video, I did a phone interview with her and she was like, okay, I wanna move you on and do like a video interview with you this date. You know, I think it was a Friday, I spoke to her and she said that Monday, you know, and I told her I'm, I'm wide open. I gave her kind of my availability and she's like, okay, I'll follow up with you this weekend and, and I'll get something scheduled. So never heard from her. And you know, the salary was a lot lower than what I wanted. So I wasn't like overly excited about the position, but I, I was hoping that maybe I could get in an interview and then maybe I could negotiate a little bit given the amount of years of experience that I have in recruiting. And I didn't hear from her for a week. Like she ghosted me completely. And then, then she sent me a message like, oh, sorry for the delay. Like, can we get on a Zoom interview? today. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I, I can do that today. Um, so I quickly went on a Zoom interview that was five minutes long. And she says, okay, I want to set you up for an interview with um, our sales manager and with, because uh, I'd be recruiting for sales roles, um, with one of our, our you know, regional VPs or whatever the case may be. And then um, our, our like, head of HR or people recruiting or whatever, the, I don't even know and says, I, let's do this Tuesday at four o'clock. I'm like, okay, great, I'm available, just send me the information and I will be there. And it was gonna be a Zoom interview. Well, nothing, crickets, never sent it over to me. So I just, that was a red flag for me um, because obviously I'm a recruiter and I get it, like candidates sometimes slip through the cracks. Like I may forget to reach out, to follow up with a candidate. Uh, it happens, like we're human, I, I get it, but I don't know, like you're hiring a recruiter and then this is how you're, you're a recruiter yourself and you're hiring another recruiter. Like usually you're kind of on your best behavior for another recruiter. And if she was gonna be my boss, which I think she was, um, I probably would have gone crazy to be honest with you. Cause it was just very unorganized and yeah. So it was, I knew it wasn't the right fit for me. So it was fine. So that was my half interview. <laughs> That's why I have three and a half interviews. So, after going through the interview process, I got an offer. I was going to get an offer from one of the agencies, but um, after kind of finding out what the commission structure would be, I told them it wasn't going to be a good fit for what I wanted, for what I was looking for. The team that I met with was fantastic. I mean, they were awesome, 
super nice people. Um, you know, the location was downtown, but I'd only have to go once a week, so that wasn't bad. So I was excited about the opportunity, but just not the way the pay structure worked. And so I told them, like, it's just not for me. And I politely told them that I wasn't interested in moving forward anymore. Um, you know, it was a bummer, but it is what it is. And then, but I am happy to say that I did get an offer uh, for a position for a senior recruiter for an energy company. And I'm going to not go into detail on like the name of the company. I have not even officially um, accepted the offer yet. I did counter a little bit to see if there's any wiggle room with pay. So we'll see what they say. Um, but once I, you know, and then I have to go through the background check and all of that, but I should be starting in a week and a half. If everything goes through quickly with the background check and, and everything, I will be starting there in a week and a half, which is awesome. So a little bit about how I landed this, this kind of the, I, I wanted to quickly kind of go into a little bit about like the process. So it, as I mentioned, I did a video about following up with recruiters and our hiring managers on LinkedIn. And that is exactly what I did for this position. I found the recruiting, I applied to the position, I found the recruiting manager on LinkedIn, I sent him a connection request with a little note that said, hey, saw a position for a senior recruiter, would love to connect to talk about it, sent him a connection request, and then followed up with a long message, like a full message to him with a copy of my resume, kind of going over my background a little bit um, and how it, you know, that it pertained, which was obviously my experience at Exelon working for another energy company and followed up with him and sent him my resume. And like he responded and said, oh, thank you so much for sending this over. I'll take a look at your application. And if it's a good, good fit, we'll set up a call. And that's exactly what happened. So who knows if I would have even gotten an interview if I didn't follow up. So like I said in that video, which you really should watch, um, it is super important to follow up with recruiters and our hiring managers, especially in this market. So I highly, highly recommend it because that is what helped me land this job. So this role I'm very excited about. Um, I The only thing that I was a little bit hesitant about, but I think I'll be okay. I, I, I'm, we'll see how it goes, but is that it's in the city. When I originally got laid off, I wanted to hopefully find something remote, um, but I've been working remote. And to be honest with you, working remote isn't all of that, uh, not all of that great. Now, as you can see, I'm a very social person. I like to talk, I like to be with people. And to me, working in an office and working with great people is super important to me. And I was hoping to get like a hybrid position, which is what this role is. I would work in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I'd work from home Monday, Friday, which is great. Um, but I was hoping to find something in the suburbs, just a little bit closer. Uh, just because the reason for that is, is because my son, you know, I'm a son, I'm a mom first. Like my job obviously is very, very important to me. I'm a hard worker, don't get me wrong, but like I'm a mom first. Like being a mom means more to me than any job. So being, you know, if there's an emergency or something that comes up with my son and I'm downtown, I can't just quickly, if I took the train down there, I can't just quickly get back. I have to wait for the next train and then it takes a little time. So, you know, that was something obviously that I was very nervous about. Uh, you know, I wanted to be a little bit close. I, I don't want to be spending half of my day commuting, but to be honest with you, it's not that bad. I looked more into the train schedule. Um, with the hours, I will be getting up really early and trying to get downtown as early as I can and start earlier in the day so that way I can get off a little bit earlier in the afternoon. Like there's a train at like 440, which would bring me back to the suburbs at like 510 because it's only a 30 minute train ride. Um, that would be great. Like if I can work it out where I can make that train every day and be back here by five o'clock that would be ideal for me because I still want to be able to come home and spend time with my son and spend time with my husband and make dinner, especially in the summer when it's nice out, be outside and hang out outside with my family before we kind of, you know, go to bed and things like that. So, um, so that's something that's really important to me. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. That's something that's very, but I'm very, very lucky that my mom has agreed to like come in the morning to help get my son ready for school and get him off to school. And you're thinking like, well, what about your husband? Why doesn't he do that? Of course, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when he has meetings at work that he needs to be there at an earlier time, earlier than when my son's school starts. 
I'm obviously going to need to be on the train early. Like I'm looking at probably right before like a train before seven o'clock in the morning. So super early to get me downtown by 7.30 to get me at the office by 7.45 so that I can hopefully get off and get to the 440 train. So it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment with scheduling, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I have support from my mom who can get my son off to school in the morning on those three days that I have to be in the office. So I'm very, very grateful to have that support. I know not many people do. And so that has allowed me to be able to accept the offer, which I haven't fully accepted yet, but I'm probably going, to, I, I'm going to, um, I'm going to accept. Hopefully they can come up a little bit in salary, but it's okay if they don't. But I'm just, um, I'm very excited. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm supposed to start March 21st. So I will keep you guys in the loop on how that goes. Um, maybe I'll even do a vlog of bringing you guys downtown with me. Maybe not my first, maybe my first day. Yeah, maybe my first day or second day, the first week, um, you know, and, and vlog as much as I can. I'm not going to be able to like, be in the office vlogging, but like my commute in. And so you can kind of see what that's like commuting into the city and, and how that goes. Because I've been trying to look up YouTube videos of people that commute into this from the suburbs into the city and there's not a lot of content out there about it. So I think I'll do kind of a vlog and talk about commuting and how that is. So yeah, that's all I got. So that's my update. I mean, guys, I'm, I'm very lucky that I found something in a month. There are so many recruiters out there that have been searching for like six months and still have not found anything. So I completely... I know that I'm very, very lucky. And again, I want to thank you guys for all of the support that you guys have shown my channel. I am so lucky that I found something. I mean, I haven't even filed for unemployment yet. And you're probably wondering like, why didn't you file for unemployment right when you got laid off? Well, technically I was still an employee with PayPal until last week. Um, like my last technical day with them was March 2nd. And I knew I had some of these interviews that probably were going to have some offers possibly coming. I was pretty confident that I would get an offer with this energy company because I felt the interview went well. Obviously, if I didn't get that offer, then I would have filed for unemployment, but it wasn't worth me going through all of the filing for like just a few days of unemployment. I have a severance and stuff, so it just wasn't worth it. Um, so I haven't even filed for unemployment, which I'm happy to say. I don't, I won't need it. So that's great. Um, but thank you guys so much for all of your support. If you want me to continue to post videos about job search and, and tips and things like that, let me know. I definitely will, but I'll continue to kind of bring you guys along. Like I said, traveling into the commuting into the office and do some day in the life, um, vlog style videos of going into the office and also working from home and, and things like that. But I'm going to continue to also, dig a little bit more deeper, go back to a lot of my other content, which is decorating and cleaning and things like that. Because the last couple of weeks, I kind of went away from that a little bit because I was focusing on the laid off stuff and, and, and interview advice. But I would still love to be able to do that if you guys are interested in that. So let me know in the comments below. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a great day. And if you are currently laid off, there is hope. Like just keep trying. Keep keep going. You got this. And if I can help in any way, please let me know. But thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your day and I will see you at the next one. Bye.